the government or NASA had said to you that the Earth is stationary, imagine that. And then imagine we are trying to convince people that, no, no, it's not stationary. It's moving forward at 32 times rifle bullet speed and spinning at a thousand miles per hour. We would be laughed at. We would have so many people telling us, you're crazy. The Earth is not moving. We would be ridiculed for having no scientific backing for this convoluted moving Earth theory. And not only that, but then people would say, oh, then how do you explain a fixed calm atmosphere and the sun's observable movement? How do you explain that? Imagine saying to people, no, no, the atmosphere is moving also, but is somehow magically velcroed to the moving Earth. The reason is not simply because the Earth is stationary. So what we are actually doing is what makes sense. We are saying that the moving Earth theory is nonsense. The stationary Earth theory makes sense. And we are being ridiculed. You've got to picture it being the other way around to realize just how ridiculous this situation is. This theory from the government and NASA that the Earth is rotating and orbiting and leaning over and wobbling is absolute nonsense. And yet people are clinging to it tightly, like a teddy bear. They just can't bring themselves to face the possibility that the Earth is stationary, though all the evidence shows it. We feel no movement. The atmosphere hasn't been blown away. We see the sun move from east to west. Everything can be explained by a motionless Earth without bringing in all these assumptions to cover up previous assumptions gone bad. If you find from your own experience that something is a fact and it contradicts what some authority has written down, then you must abandon the authority and base your reasoning on your own findings. So investigate the subject. I wouldn't put an electric blanket on for anything. First, I'd be worried I might get electrocuted. No, I don't trust technology. But I mean, the main thing, Wally, is that I think that that kind of comfort just separates you from reality in a very direct way. You mean? I mean, if you don't have that electric blanket and your apartment is cold and you need to put on another blanket or go into the closet and pile up coats on top of the blanket you have, well, then you know it's cold. And that sets up a link of things. You have compassion for the per what well, is the person next to you cold? Are there other people in the world who are cold? What a cold night. I like the cold. My God, I never realized. I don't want a blanket. It's fun being cold. I can snuggle up against you even more because it's cold. All sorts of things occur to you. Turn on that electric blanket and it's like taking a tranquilizer. It's like being lobotomized by watching television. I think you enter the dream world again. What does it do to us, Wally, living in an environment where something as massive as the seasons or winter or cold don't in any way affect us? I mean, we're animals after all. I mean, what does that mean? I think that means that instead of living under the sun and the moon and the sky and the stars, we're living in a fantasy world of our own making. I mean, really, tell me, why do we require a trip to Mount Everest in order to be able to perceive one moment of reality? I mean, I mean, is Mount Everest more real than New York? I mean, is New York real? I mean, you see, I think if you could become fully aware of what existed in a cigar store next door to this restaurant, I think it would just blow your brains out. I mean, I mean, isn't there just as much reality to be perceived in the cigar store as there is on Mount Everest? I mean, what do you think? You see, I think that not only is there nothing more real about Mount Everest, I think there's nothing that different in a certain way. I mean, because reality is, is uniform in a way, so that if, you're, if your perceptions, are, I mean, if your own mechanism is, is operating correctly, it would become irrelevant to go to Mount Everest, and, and sort of absurd, because I mean, it just, I, mean, I mean, of course, on some level, I mean, obviously, it's very different from a cigar store on 7th Avenue. You. But, but I mean, well, well, I agree with you, Wally. But the problem is that people can't see the cigar store now. I mean, things don't affect people the way they used to. I mean, it may very well be that 10 years from now, people will pay $10,000 in cash to be castrated just in order to be affected by something. Well, why, why do you think that is? I mean, why is that? I mean, is it just because people are, are lazy today or they're bored? I mean, are we just like bored, spoiled children who've just been lying in the bathtub all day, just playing with their plastic duck, and now they're just thinking, well, what can I do? Okay, yes, we are bored. We're all bored now. 
But has it ever occurred to you, Wally, that the process that creates this boredom that we see in the world now may very well be a self-perpetuating, unconscious form of brainwashing created by a world totalitarian government based on money, and that all of this is much more dangerous than one thinks? And it's not just a question of individual survival, Wally, but that somebody who's bored is asleep, and somebody who's asleep will not say no? See, I keep meeting these people. I mean, uh, just a few days ago, I met this man whom I greatly admire. He's a Swedish physicist, Gustav Bjornstrand. And he told me that he no longer watches television, he doesn't read newspapers, and he doesn't read magazines. He's completely cut them out of his life because he really does feel that we're living in some kind of Orwellian nightmare now and that everything that you hear now contributes to turning you into a robot. And when I was at Findhorn, I met this extraordinary English tree expert who had devoted his life to saving trees. He just got back from Washington, lobbying to save the Redwoods. He's 84 years old. He always travels with a backpack because he never knows where he's going to be tomorrow. And when I met him at Findhorn, he said to me, where are you from? And I said, New York. He said, ah, New York, yes, that's a very interesting place. Do you know a lot of New Yorkers who keep talking about the fact that they want to leave but never do? And I said, oh, yes. And he said, why do you think they don't leave? I gave him different banal theories. He said, oh, I don't think it's that way at all. He said, I think that New York is the new model for the new concentration camp, where the camp has been built by the inmates themselves, and the inmates are the guards, and they have this pride and this thing they've built. They've built their own prison, and so they exist in a state of schizophrenia, where they are both guards and prisoners, and as a result, they no longer have, having been lobotomized, the capacity to leave the prison they've made or to even see it as a prison. And then he went into his pocket and he took out a seed for a tree and he said, this is a pine tree. He put it in my hand and he said, escape before it's too late. Troubles by the riverside 
a shred of proof Cause the earth is still and just don't move Horizons that I level and flat Stars show no stellar parallax Michelson, Morley, Sagdad and Gale The famous series experiment failed The earth is the center of the universe Bury the truth and the things get worse Nassau's Neely takes the lead Bill that science guy shares his creed Groaning's less of a magic crew Be sure they're Satan's children too Jesuits Tesla's energy was new Then World War I and World War II And what did Admiral Burgo do? I took first and then on two And I took the Nazi troops With the ships and planes and gas canoes And what did they find? We don't know Some say German, some say snow Some say that they reached the wall Of a glass dome that's way too tall But even though many of us are needy They blocked us all with the end of the treaty Back Project Paperclip NASA's Nazi Scientists UFOs in Area 51 Where all the secret tests are done Yeah, yeah, yeah They start a Project Fishbowl They try to make a great big hole in the firmament That's way up high Planes and bombs they try and try False flags pretend terrorists are actors that just don't exist And fake cold wars and nuclear wars TV tells us how it goes Duck and cover, take your little pill Nassau's proven exactly nil No Russia, US space race Debunkers make too good of a case How come I can see way past the curve? Eh? I mean way past Incoming asteroids, could it be Earth? We'd be destroyed, we'd be destroyed. One big sun flare, that's all she wrote. We'd be destroyed, we'd be destroyed. Clinton and Obama, they just both the went on. Jimmy Kimball's late night TV show. They mentioned secret files and make a note The flat earth changed, aliens disclose Yeah, yeah, yeah Now aliens will have to wait Sphere versus flat debate The more of us who know the earth isn't round We'll make this house of cards fall down Careful what you wish for, friend The flat earth the real is not the end This system, it just has to crash New world order from the end the next step of the evil plan is to make you take the mark in your head or your hand. I know that it's a real low blow. They got the money in your mind and now they want your soul. Big bang, random life everywhere, evolution. Where's God? Where's God? Aristotle, Copernicus, Newton, Einstein, and the rest. Even Aristophanes was wrong Now you've heard this amazing song Folks, love each other, would you? And remember that God loves you very much And we'll talk soon Lieutenant Kendrick ordered the code red, didn't he? Because that's what you told Lieutenant Kendrick to do Object! And when it went bad, you cut country. these guys loose! Your Honor, you had Marcus inside a bony transport! Your Honor! You doctored the logbook! Damn it, Captain! You coerced the doctor! Consider yourself in contempt! You. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to You them. want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You 